Uh, okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, would Pastor Cyrus like to lead us in a invocation? Eternal God, our Father, we come again on this beautiful day to say thank you, dear God. First of all, for your new mercies we received early this morning. Yes, sir. And for your amazing grace. Yes. Come thanking you for this agency. We thank you for this board and its director. Yes. We thank you for the blessings that we have received this year. Yes and for the progress we've made this year. Yes, thank you. Thank you, dear God. Thank you. For we realize without you we can't do anything. And now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon Jessica. Yes. Whose mother has gone out to meet you. Yes. We pray for strength. We pray for comfort. Yes. And we thank you again for this board of directors. Yes, Lord. And we pray that you lead us into a new year doing better things for the seniors of this community. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 While we're up, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Poole, can we get a roll call? Yes. Please. Attorney Jennifer Moser. Here. Ms. Jerry Brooker. I'm going to try to get to the action. Who's walking in right now? Who's here? Cole. Patricia Williams. Ms. Patricia Williams. Present. Councilman Shauna Banks. Attorney Stephen Schiller. Representative C. Denise Marcel. Present. Ms. Jessica Griffin. Dr. Reverend Leo Cyrus. Here. Brother Anders. Anders. Professor Dorothy Jackson. Here. Ms. Pamela Ann Mitchell. She's here. Ms. Mitchell. Here. Damien Robinson. Chief. Chief. Call it uh, Dunn. Here. Call it Ms. Dot Thibodeau. Here. Okay. Open the floor to public comments. There being none, we'll move on. Um, the staff is going to bring lunch so we can process. We can get started. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're going to. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, do I hear a motion to certify the minutes of the last board meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, ad hoc committee report. You want to? Can we go to all those? What you want to do first? No, no. Murphy. Oh, Murphy. that's not on mine. Oh, you got the, you got the ad hoc committee oh. agenda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Attorney Murphy Foster has a report for us. Uh, yes. Most of you are familiar with the um, the lawsuit that was filed titled Jacqueline Antoine versus the Staff Rouge Council on Aging. Uh, it also named Jackson and Tasha as uh, defendants in the case. Um, and Tasha uh, retained separate counsel. I represented uh, the counsel. Um, I could not represent Tasha or Ms. Jackson in connection with that because of the uh, ethics laws, the ethical rules we have as lawyers and arguably a conflict of interest. Um, so uh, Tasha was required to retain her own counsel, Mr. Ernest Johnson, to my right, who you all probably know and love. Um, and uh, Ernest uh, successfully defended Tasha. I successfully defended the counsel on aging. Ms. Jackson was successfully defended as well. We all had the case dismissed. In the case. They also sued a number of, they sued Southern, they sued the uh, Governor's uh, Office of Elderly Affairs. Council of Elderly Affairs. Anyway, the whole thing was thrown out. However, it is on appeal. They did take an appeal, so it's not a final judgment. 
Under Louisiana law, specifically Revised Statute 12, uh, colon 227, and under our bylaws, specifically Article 9, Section 4, um, this board has the right to indemnify and to pay back uh, or, or pay for the attorney's fees incurred by Tasha as a result of her defense. Is it a right or is it obligation? It is an, it is a it becomes an obligation when the decision becomes final. Uh, state law requires us. Um, manda it, it's a mandatory obligation once the decision is final. State law, as well as the bylaws of the council, have a provisional um, or a discretionary provision that says during dependency, we can choose to reimburse her or to to pay for her attorney's fees during the pendency of the litigation. While I might not have come, I didn't come to you when this was originally filed and suggest that you do that, we felt pretty good about the case, but nevertheless, we feel better about the case now that we have uh, a decision dismissing the case, uh, at least at this stage. And so Tasha has asked that we pay for her attorney's fees under the discretionary provision of the bylaws and under the statute. Again, if and when that decision becomes final, it would be an absolute obligation. Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson has submitted a bill for $16,700 for his services. Uh, we also tendered this matter to both of our insurance companies. We have directors and officers coverage and we have general liability coverage. Arguably, both of those um, insurance policies cover this obligation of the council uh, to pay for this. Initially, our DNO policy said no, and they came up with a bunch of silly legal excuses why they would not. Uh, we have persuaded them, uh, without having to sue them, that they should. And so they have agreed to pay at the sum of $5,300. We have a $10,000 deductible. Uh, and so there's, they didn't want to pay us for us fighting with them over the, which was included in uh, I, Ernest and my fighting them over coverage issues. So they they trimmed us about a thousand bucks. If we wanted to make an issue of it, we can, um, we may still, but at least as of now, they've agreed to pay 5,300 of that 16.7. Haven't heard back from the other insurance company, but we are cautiously optimistic that they're going to pony up some money too. So, um, my recommendation to the board is that you exercise your discretionary authority under the bylaws, given the status of the case, the fact that at least um, the sitting district judge has said that it is uh, not a valid lawsuit and dismissed it summarily. Uh, you have uh, the discretion and the ability to reimburse those attorney's fees. The request would be for 11400 which is that which has been billed by Mr. Johnson to date. Question. Uh, you talk about the fees that are owed to uh, Attorney Johnson, but has there been a bill submitted by Dorothy Jackson's attorney as well? And if so, what are, the, what are those costs and are we going to uh, do the same thing as it relates to, uh, does the bylaws uh, require us to do the same thing for board members? Uh, that she has not requested it uh, as of yet. And um, I assume that it wasn't requested because Southern University probably picked it up. Well, I, I, but I, I don't know that. Since Ms. Jackson is here, we don't have to make an assumption. <laughs> just kind of ask her uh, if, if you feel free to talk about it. Sure. I, mean, I just want to know from the perspective of a board member, the bylaws uh, would probably outline the same thing as it relates to attorney fees as a board member because any of us, mm -hmm. what I want to go on the record of saying is any of us could be sued for something. Right. And then we have to get a, a defense counsel to represent us, so keep that in mind. And you wouldn't want that to have to come out of your pocket, especially if it gets dismissed and it's no basis for the suit. Doesn't stop anybody from suing you. So having said that, I want to uh, address Ms. Jackson and, and ask her, Professor Jackson, 
Um, what are your thoughts? And sure. Um, from from a standpoint of my employment, the state of Louisiana provided representation through the attorney general's office. Uh, but personally, uh, I was sued as well, and I had to retain counsel for that representation. And that counsel was Joe Porter. I understand that, and that's that's what I'm saying. So some of it was paid for by the state, yes. but you incurred expenses just Absolutely. as Ms. Amar did yes. personally, correct? Are you intending on bringing those to this body is my question so that we could uh, utilize the same provisions that we have for Ms. Amar to provide those for you as well? Yes, now that I know that uh, that is available because I, I was not aware of that. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any intention on making uh, changes to the bylaws to include all of the board members in the future? It arguably yeah, it covers, does. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does cover us. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, another question. <laughs> How much? She didn't have to do it. Joe, you don't have I, I don't have that number to give to you, but it was several thousand dollars. I will tell you that. Well, my suggestion, just a suggestion, since we're doing this, is that you bring documentation sure. mm -hmm. of your, you know, the amount. Sure. And maybe we can, when we vote to to do Miss uh, Amar's, we could also vote. But once she brings her documentation, well, well, they, well, let me let me just suggest that they don't they don't have to be bought at the same time right. because. Ms. Amar was already afforded the opportunity of knowing that she had that privilege okay. in order to, to bring that. Her attorney is here. I'm sure he doesn't want to wait on somebody else's bill. Right. He doesn't want to be paid. Am I right about that? <laughs> He's been waiting. I'm just taking a while to get that. Say what I was saying. What I was saying is that we could make the motion that, you know, what, what I'm saying is paid for, Tosh paid him. But when including in the motion include her amount also once she brings it. And I'm not the I'm not the board chair, but I would suggest that we wouldn't do that until we have that in front of this body. Uh, the full right. bill we would do them separately as somebody presents them. You know, I, hopefully you don't get sued. I might get sued individually or personally <laughs> and bring one next month or whatever that right. is. I think yeah. we have to take them as they present it. Right. Um, but but I just want to make, go on the record of saying that I knew, I thought that you had incurred some uh, legal expenses as well. If, if, at the proper time, I, 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 I make the motion know. that um, we utilize the uh, our ability um, as board members uh, to pay the balance that's owed to Attorney um, Johnson on behalf of uh, our esteemed uh, leader here at the Council on Aging who had to defend herself and the suit was dismissed. Based upon that, that's my motion. I have a question. Yes. What is the holdup with the other policy? They just haven't responded. We initially only made demand upon the DNO policy. Okay. The DNO policy, uh, the attorney for the DNO policy and I talked, and he suggested that uh, he thought there was coverage. It's not something we worried about because we assumed there was coverage under the DNO policy. It didn't didn't come up till they denied coverage, mm -hmm. and I told him we were going to sue him. Uh, and then he <laughs> said, "Well, okay." Uh, and he wrote a, about an eight-page letter preserving rights and saying why they really didn't know it, but then agreed to pay the, the 53. And since that time, we have, or prior to that time, within the last month, we've written the GNL policy as well and made demand on them. Can I do that? Go ahead. One one follow up question. So since it's on appeal, do you can will you continue to have attorney fees that are going to yes. be accruing them? Is that correct? Yes. So if they're going to pay anything, perhaps that could go towards I'm just future. asking uh, mm -hmm. any of those future bills. Right. Is that correct? Which, which, which would mean that we wouldn't need to wait until we got the final answer from the other insurance carrier, but go ahead and pay the balance because you're steady in crewing costs. Yes. Am I, am I correct? Right, because I, am because, I um, uh, Mr. Foster couldn't, can't, cannot can't represent, represent me, so. Right. So you yeah. still have to have somebody, mm -hmm. I guess. Through the appeals process. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess maybe because I'm, I work in law office, so I, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just pointing out to the other board members, not saying anybody doesn't know. 
but that those costs are going to continue to accrue as long as that appeal uh, process is out there until they finally dismiss it. So there are costs that are constantly being accrued, even if the insurance carrier is the other insurance carrier is going to pay something. I believe that we have an obligation to pay those fees as if any one of us ourselves would have been sued or accused of some erroneous act and had to defend ourselves. She made a motion. I made the motion. Okay. Um, hold, let me make sure all the questions are answered. So you, you told me that the record has not been lodged yet, That's correct? correct. Okay. Um, and they're waiting on the transcript? Yeah, the record hadn't been lodged because the record hasn't been finally prepared by the judge's office. Okay. When it, uh, when it is lodged, we'll get briefing dates. Uh, briefing dates will kick in and we'll have an obligation to brief it. it um, thereafter, it's just a matter of, of timing in the first circuit. They're not always the fastest. Uh, I don't think this is a particularly complicated case and it shouldn't, it shouldn't take that long for them to decide. Okay. Um, so there is a motion on the table by Denise Marcel. Do I hear a second? And this is to approve payment of Mr. Johnson's legal fees in his representation of Ms. Amar in the Antoine suit. Do I hear a second? In the amount of 11... $11,400. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Mm, what did you want to do next? Do you want to skip to the bank? I have a question. So now, as additional feelings are accrued, that will come back to the board? And yeah, he, Mr. Johnson can present his new bills, and, and then, then we can... What the second insurance company ever does? And yes. Right. Okay. We'll keep you up to date on it month to month. Okay. Yes. No. Um, can we just go out of order? Can yeah. We motion, go out of order and let's mm -hmm. discuss the bank. Uh, do I hear a motion to go out of order? We have the bank here to talk to us about financing um, the new building on Fuquay. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Who's here from you? Um, we have Mr. So we, you all uh, know from the last board meeting that we've been discussing um, the purchase in the property at uh, Fuquay in the uh, Gracie Street subdivision. Um, we will be closing on that property once you all give me uh, your full approval today. We'll be closing on that property on Tuesday. The closing is set for Tuesday. The bank has uh, graciously committed to, uh, we'll be closing on that property in cash with our own funds. The bank has graciously, graciously committed, Whitney Bank, to give us $4.7 million to build our brand new administrative building with uh, a with 25,000 square foot building with our kitchen, uh, commercial kitchen in the building, which is two blocks. When you stand at the front of the proposed site, two blocks from the brand new senior center that is at 1701 Main. So uh, in that $4.7 million, we'll buy some golf carts to ride between the two <laughs> properties. Um, so we have Mrs. Skelton here. In your, in your documents, you should see the loan um, commitment letter. Um, and I'm going to let Dr. Gilmore come up and kind of give us just a brief overview of the letter. We have Mr. Skelton here who can also uh, answer any questions if you have any. I'll go through highlights of the commitment letter, things that for the past month or so, Ms. Amar, Ms. Pratt, and Whitney Bank has been discussing. Um, and, and I'm not going to go into the order, I'm going to just verbalize it to you. Number one thing that we are pleased to say is that if there is no prepayment penalty, so we won't have any um, in any penalties if we decide to pay this loan off uh, sooner than its term date. We have the loan through 2026, um, and the reason being we want to pay the loan off during the time of this tax millage. We don't want to carry this debt into uh, uh, the next tax millage because the voters have to vote in another eight, nine years on to renew it. And so we want this, this debt to be paid off 
um, during this tax millage phase. Uh, that's something that we discussed. Um, we will have semi-annual payments, and they'll be based on our draws from the city. Um, so we'll pay big lump sums um, annually and semi-annually on this payment as well, both principal and interest. And we also have Mickey, who, Mickey, our representation from Brazil Saxes here also. Are there any other high level um, items in the commitment letter we should mention to our board members? Uh, we went through all the terms of it and all the business terms have been worked out. Um, mm -hmm. We looked at it from a legal perspective and uh, all that seems to be in order now. And, you know, there'll be a construction contract and certain things will have to be built into that. But looks okay. Whitney, did you want to say anything? Partnership. I just appreciate the uh, opportunity to continue serving you guys. You know, we've been banking with Whitney for like 40 years, so they've been looking forward to now working with us when we have money, because before they've been working with us when we didn't, so <laughs> they're excited. <laughs> Any questions on the, oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, that's your job. <laughs> Um, so just so it's clear, they're offering to lend us up to 4.7 million, correct? Yes, correct. And we'll get to in more detail later, but we think it's probably only going to cost us around 4.3. Correct. Okay. And our plan is to pay this off quickly. Quickly. Yes. Hopefully within seven, seven years. years. Yes. Does anybody have any questions with regard to that? And you'll understand more when we get to the... Property. Property. Yes. Okay. Can we get a motion for me to sign it? Because <laughs> I wasn't going to sign it without Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so we're moving her to sign this commitment. <laughs> so move. Thank Second. You, All those in favor? Uh, All right. Okay. All right. Now you can sign it. And you can sign it, okay. This gentleman can go back to work. <laughs> okay. Back in order. You want to do the finance report? Yeah. Uh, in Mrs. Pratt's absence, she uh, would like me to report on the uh, 2018 encumbrances on the three current projects. And the dollar amounts are based on the estimated cost for the projects. For the Dumas House parking lot renovations, uh, the estimated amount would be 350000 the renovation of our Homewood Aquatic Center, 650000 And the firehouse, uh, Gus Young Avenue, uh, is going to be based upon the appraised value. So we don't have that dollar amount just yet. Okay, and that's all she gave me to report to you guys. That was short as took part. Thank you. And we have all these funds set aside and earmarked for this right now, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Oh, the resolution for 3B retirement plan. Okay. Is that Dr. Gilmore? So last week we had a milestone in our agency, um, something that Ms. Amar has always wanted, um, was retirement for our employees. And you all as board members, was retirement for our employees. You sure Ms. Amar can share with you stories over the years of, of folks who have retired after serving the agency for 15 and 20 years? 40. 40 years, um, one lady, and uh, left only with her Social Security. No retirement. And so uh, we're excited that employees are now sign signing up for our 403B plan. You all already gave us the authorization to bring a retirement plan to the, um, to the agency. What we have is a formal um, resolution uh, or, or formal record of action that's asked of us from Raymond James, the folks who are administering our retirement plan for you all to uh, basically certify and approve that we, we move forward so that they, they, they can have this of record. So we'll have Dr. Cole read the yeah, Dr. Cole read this resolution. Mm -hmm. Please. East Baton Rouge Council on Agent Incorporated Formal Record of Action. The, follow, the following is a formal record of action taken by the governing body of East Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge Council on Agent Incorporated, the company. With respect to the adoption of the East Baton Rouge Council on Aging 403B plan, the plan, the following resolution are hereby adopted. Resolved that the plan be adopted in the form attached hereto, which plan is hereby adopted and approved. 
resolve further that the appropriate officers of the company be, and they here are hereby are authorized and directed to execute the plan on behalf of the company. Resolve further that the co the officers of the company be, and they hereby are authorized and directed to take any and all actions and execute and deliver such documents as they may deem necessary, appropriate or convenient to affect the foregone resolution herein, including without limitation, causing to be prepared and file such reports, reports, documents, and other information as may be required under the applicable law. Do I hear a motion to adopt the formal record of action? Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Cole. All right, well, that's good. I'm glad we finally got that going for everybody. Oh, yeah, this I'm is so excited, excited about that. I bet. Yeah. Okay, what's next? <laughs> we'll do the ad hoc committee report. You want to? No, you I'm sorry. Skip personnel. personnel. Um, okay, personnel committee report. Okay, as you all know, um, most of our administrative staff is the liaison to the committees uh, of the overall board. I am the liaison to the personnel committee. It's now time, if you notice in your packet, you should have a folder like this, an envelope like this. It's that time of year where it's time to rate the performance of our CEO. Mm -hmm. And what will happen, I've included in there the performance review form for FY18-19, as well as a pre-addressed envelope and a letter from me with some key dates on them. So I'm giving them to you guys today, and you have until January the 15th to have them postmarked and mailed back in. They will be mailed back to East Baton Rouge Council on Agent on Florida Boulevard, but they will be, they are addressed attention to Mrs. Booker, since she is the chairperson for the personnel committee. <coughs> they will be opened and reviewed in January at our proposed board retreat by the personnel committee. After the votes, after the performance review is, uh, is, is tallied up, Mrs. Booker will bring the report back to the full board and to our board chairman, and she will give the report of the results of the performance review. If you guys have any questions on the letter in your packet, I do have my cell phone number. If I don't answer, you're welcome to text me. If you leave me a voicemail, I'll call you back at my earliest convenience. <laughs> <laughs> Which and is never. Five, huh? that, no, uh -uh, I'll call back. <laughs> and there are five core factors in here that uh, you guys will be uh, going over for her, or, or, as it relates to her, rather. Overall organizational performance, community leadership, administration and human resources, this, this. financial sustainability and mission impact, and her overall uh, performance with the board of directors. Okay. So this. What about her attendance at church? They don't count pastors. Oh, <laughs> That's a sidebar meeting, sir. <laughs> We're going to know which one is his. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know which one is We don't know which one is his. Uh, it's the, uh, the, the state, uh, the governor's office of elderly affairs has us to do this. We just did the entire staff at the end of the year. And so they're coming in uh, at the beginning of the year, sometimes at the end of January, to review. They will review everybody's employee file and the you mind first, so they'll be looking for your letter in my file. Uh, yeah, so part for of the this board is members problem. that are not here today, I'll be mailing those out to them. Okay. I will be following whatever Pastor Cyrus. <laughs> 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 okay. Board chair report. Ad hoc committee met earlier, and we have a lot of things going on. <laughs> um, I've been saying Fuquay wrong my entire life. Fuquay. It's Fuquay. <laughs> um, but Mr. Didier is here to talk to us about that property and everything that's been going on over there. Want to Come on, Mr. Didier. Come on up. Sure. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Daryl Didier, Didier Architecture. Um, <clears throat> we were tasked with a couple things as it relates to the Fuquay property. <clears throat> I've been saying it wrong too my whole life. Um, number one was to do an architectural structural inspection and provide a report, which we did. 
Um, we also uh, were asked to provide a program for what could be on the property. Uh, admin, commercial kitchen, uh, single story, multi-story, parking, site access, entry points, that kind of thing. Um, we did that work as well. Uh, we also were asked to perform or hire a company to perform a environmental phase one uh, report, which we did. Um, the results of that report uh, uh, indicated that there was some history of a printing company that had been housed in that building, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, the materials and, and chemicals that those folks use, if they're not handled properly, could possibly contaminate groundwater and, and uh, soil. Um, so in, in viewing that history, we were required to perform a phase two, uh, which is just really uh, more investigation. So we localized where we thought the, the printing company was housed. We cored through the concrete, took samples of groundwater and soil. Uh, all of that came back uh, as just normal metals in the ground. There were no contaminants uh, that, would, that would give us pause. Uh, LADEQ, uh, uh, the, the materials were all under the threshold for DEQ to be involved at all. We did have Terracon develop a uh, letter that's sent to LADEQ. That was done last week, and I think uh, those folks should be responding back to us in a week or two, perhaps. Um, we also surveyed the property, uh, and, and so we know, uh, working with Mickey and, and Murph's office, uh, we know um, what property is going to be, act, you know, what property you're buying, what are the constraints of the property, what, what is it zone, or flood zone, all that type of stuff. Um, so most of the lots that are being purchased are C2 zoning. Uh, you're not in a flood zone. Uh, you're, in a, you're in a flood zone X, which is not prone to flood. Um, a couple of lots will need to be rezoned uh, to, to use them for what we want to do, but they're not, they're, they're off of the 17th Street. They're not contiguous to the commercial component. So, well, they are kind of contiguous, lot. but. They're right. a parking lot. So, uh, that's it. Y y anything else? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we're all clear. <laughs> We're all clear, right. and as soon as we get too much information, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if we adopt the resolution to purchase the property today, we will mm -hmm. close on that on Tuesday. on Tuesday. And I think Tasha said this, but we're paying cash for the piece of property, and then we fi we're financing the building with um, Whitney Hancock. So um, the, go the, ahead. The appraised amount for the property is it, it appraised for seven hundred and. $45,000 with the building on it. Without the building on it, it was 800 and how much, Dr. Gilmore? 800 and 45. 845. 845. We are offering and we're purchasing the building for 731,800, the property, $731,841 um, with some additional closing costs and attorney's fees. So when we close on the property, we will have immediate equity uh, in the property. You know, something I forgot to ask uh -huh. meeting earlier um, at our convention. Are we still going to do the partnership with uh, Care South at that location? Would and they have? Would they be able to work, or is it going to be a seventeen to one? Area? So a part of the pl part of the plan is because in in that area, there within those two blocks there are nothing but vacant lots. What we want to do is once we close on this property and get established with the admin building, is to do our village concept in that area. So. The clinic will come in and build their piece, and we'll have the store to come in and build their piece. We are going to be at that location. Yes, and we're going to put okay. the senior housing in that same area, and we'll have our whole little Great. village area right there. Huh? So you have the same owner that we're buying this property from, so we have a high, high chance that we'll be able to buy, buy the rest lots. of the lots. It's okay. the same owner. He okay. owns all that. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right, so we did the appraisal. Mm -hmm. So that's so, the resolution. The resolution. Yes. It's very long. 
I was going to read the last book. But it's written by our attorneys. It's do we, what you all know. Do we have to read it all? <laughs> we don't yet. Do we have to we read, have read all of What's that? No, Make it up. We have to read the whole resolution. resolution. No. <laughs> uh, as, long as, as long as everybody has a copy of the resolution, affirms that they've read it and are satisfied with it, mm. put it to vote. Okay. Okay. You don't have to read it all. You don't have to read it all. Okay. So be it further resolved that these resolutions shall not act to supersede any prior resolution of the corporation with respect to the acquisition and loan said prior resolutions to remain in full force and effect. I, Derek Cole, certify that I am the duly elected secretary of the corporation and that the notice of the meeting of the board of directors was properly given to all board members and that the above resolution was adopted by a majority of the board of directors present at a meeting duly called, held by them on the 14th day of December, 2000. 2018 at the offices of the corporation at which meeting a quorum of the members of the board of directors were present and all voted in favor of the passage of, the, of these resolutions. These resolutions are true and correct and have not been altered or replaced and are in full force and effect and have not been modified or rescinded. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, this 14th day of December 2018. So just to be clear, where this resolution is so that Tasha can close on the property on Tuesday. Can I, did anyone not receive a copy of the resolution? Okay. And everyone has read it. Mm -hmm. Can I make a motion? <laughs> Mr. Robinson makes a motion to adopt the resolution. Do I hear a second? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Yay. Exciting. 1701 Main. 1701 Main Street Design. So when Tasha and I initially went and met with the architect on 1701 um, for the design phase, uh, we did not like it. Uh, <laughs> and so they went back to the drawing board and now you should have in your folder this packet and they've come up with some new colors and concepts for us that are a hundred times better than what we first saw. So the, it should be um, Bright and cheery and not like a mental so institution. In your, <laughs> like um, because if you recall, the the um, build the city of Parish allotted 3.1. We have 3.1 million dollars to do the renovation for the 1701 main project. So what we decided is there is not there was not enough space for administrative staff and offices. So this is going to be like a, our supersized senior center. In this senior center, we have all the spaces that we can have for seniors, we have a great um, big uh, meeting space and uh, open room for them. There is a caterer's kitchen and a cafeteria, almost like a school cafeteria, but also like Piccadilly where you, you know, you slide the tray, you go down the hot line, then you go to the cold line. There's drink stations, there's coffee stations. You know, you can pet, you can push the cappuccino machine. and It's gonna be the most state-of-the-art senior center in, in this state. Um, we'll have a Lotus Pantry, our, our grocery pantry will be in there four times the size of the grocery store that we have now in the building. We will have adequate parking for all the seniors. We'll have a, uh, a area for adult daycare for for folks that are going into work downtown and want to drop their, uh, their loved ones or their parents off. We'll have that area. We'll have a big card room, a library, arts and craft room, sewing room, uh, a fitness room with equipment in it. We'll also have a workout room in this facility. Facility, uh, meeting spaces for the advisory board to meet with their own conference room, drop down televisions in all of the room in a, most of the rooms so that you can watch the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful and the sports and the westerns for the guys. Uh, so it's going to be uh, an awesome, awesome place, uh, space for the seniors, yes. Can board members come watch Young and the Restless? <laughs> you can. You can yeah, come, well, come and come. watch Young and the Restless. Mm -hmm. And we won't be doing any, the great thing about it, won't be any production going on in this building. It is actually a place just for the seniors. No packing out in the middle of the lobby. No Meals on Wheels coming through. So they'll be able to do whatever they want to do in this facility. Um, and so we look forward to that. We, uh, at last meeting, the the 
Coleman Partners and the city have, they put uh, the stuff, been the OCD, they approved it. A couple of verbal changes need to be made to it, but in January, it's going to be going uh, to the full council to get their uh, approval so that they can go ahead and bid for a contractor finally, and hopefully by February, March, we'll be having shovels in you guys' hands so we can break ground on the renovation and get done, and they anticipate 18 months all renovations will be done and the seniors can move uh, and we can move around the same time because DDA anticipates 18 to 20 months on our building so we'll be moving into these two spaces around the same time frame. Yes. So stuff. when you get a chance you can go and look at some of the colors and um, we're going to be all green and the, the desk is low in case they're in a the chair and there's some great everything automatic doors it's just state of the art for the seniors wide toilets and tall toilets and so everything is great. <laughs> you guys take it out, take it out, it's in here. Right. Okay, uh, Demas House parking lot drainage study. Mr. Didier. Mr. Didier took care of that for us and we're still muddling through it. <laughs> well, um, that's probably a good way to put it. Um, <laughs> You know, you all know we did a drainage study, uh, hired uh, Southeast Engineering uh, to do a drainage study, and, and part of that study uh, indicated that the subsurface drainage system that's currently there is inadequately sized to take on the amount of water and runoff from not only from our site, but adjacent sites that we're taking. Um, the other thing, uh, a critical factor that was brought to our attention is that the system is back pitched from Sherwood Forest subsurface system, meaning it's flowing backwards into the site. Um, everybody knows water, water flows downhill. And so um, not only are we not able to alleviate the, the uh, storm water from our site, we're taking on water perhaps from Sherwood Forest and from upstream. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we were tasked with designing a, a system or a solution to that problem, <clears throat> which we have been working on for the last 30, 45 days. We've met with the city a couple times. We met as recently as yesterday, and uh, they've got some, uh, they've got their own opinions about what we're doing or how we're discharging the water. Uh, so we're still kind of playing ping pong back and forth with the city, but we're, uh, we're on it. Uh, we feel confident in the system that we've engineered and designed, um, and so we're uh, we're still kind of right there. We're we're on the ten yard line. We're not quite there yet. Uh, right. So we have a plan, and we're going to pay for it. But we just can't get the city on board quite yet that's with well, our plan. That's well said. So we're going to put our <laughs> boxing gloves on and, and send Murphy over there. <laughs> So it's in the works, but um, I'm sure we'll have another update at our next board meeting. Hopefully it'll be, uh, we got a yes and we're working on it. So thank you, Daryl. Um, okay, so the Antioch Senior Center, as y'all may have previously heard, we had a really good response to that senior center and they are too big for the place that they're in right now. So um, Tasha and James found another place which we have been working on to accommodate our needs. Um, we have bathroom restrictions and sink restrictions and stuff like that. The space is approximately the same size as this building and we'll be able to hold double or more Triple. the people that we already have because we have what 120 25 people on the waiting list, something uh -huh. like that, to come to the Antioch Senior Center because the fire marshal won't let us have any more. <laughs> right. So we, when do we think we'll be able to move into the new Between building? Between December the 26th and 28th. Okay. So we'll have a Re grand Re reopening Re <laughs> of Antioch and we'll be able to fit all the people on the waiting list too. Right. So hopefully we'll do that for the first. Yeah. Any, anything else on that? Mm -mm. Okay. And then, because we've grown so much, what did you say, we went from 48 employees to 124? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we've had to get some extra space around the corner from the main building um, for more admin and storage of files on seniors. So for every senior that we sign up, which we're up to, we signed up, what did you say? Like another 15,000. Another 15,000 this year. 15, this year. Mm -hmm. So for everyone, we have to have an actual physical file folder and a piece of paper 
paper with all their information and stuff in there. So we need a place to store that plus, you know, all the people that we've hired. So um, James found a building around the corner <laughs> from the main uh, street build from the main building on Florida. Not very and, um, <laughs> cheap. Be, it's cheap. It's not pretty, but it's cheap. Cost so <laughs> I like that cost effective. <laughs> so when do we anticipate we'll be getting people over January in there? first January one? Okay. Yep. It's on Wooddale. It's on Wooddale. It's the old um, Savar Temp Staffing Building because they built a new building, maybe a block from there. And so we'll be moving about 30, 20 people in there. 20 people over there. Okay. okay. Anything else from me that That's you can it. think of? Nope. Okay. Informational items. You have a report for us? I have a report. Um, do you want to ask them to accept the report? Do they need to accept it? Do, I don't know. Okay. Do they need to accept it? No, maybe. Okay. I don't think so. Um, CEO's report. Just want to go over a couple of things. We uh, officially opened Our Lady Lake um, Bishop uh, feeding nutritional site. Since opening, we have been feeding about 362 seniors a day. Um, in addition to the seniors that we're feeding already, they are really, really loving it. We feed them, we send them an extra meal for the weekends because you know they don't uh, they don't prepare food for themselves. So we are um, the kitchen is really, really cranking a lot, a lot of meals, um, and so we are we may be have to come down here and start using this kitchen and we have we are making so many so many meals um, but they are really really appreciative I think uh, representative Marcel was there for the grand opening um, our lady of the lake is really pleased and the seniors really really appreciate the opportunity to have a hot meal um, and so we are to capacity and we can't take on another senior project or senior center this year. We have opened um, this year alone seven new facilities. So we've grown from 16 to 26 in one year, which is uh, a good testament. Is that the number? 25? What's the number? 23. <laughs> 23. <laughs> which is a great testament to, to our staff. That's a visit. That's a visit. Uh, well, I have two in the, in the queue that's, you know, I've been holding off on. Um, so, and then 2018, we had our Thanksgiving been dinner this year at uh, the Crown Plaza and it was, we, awesome. It was awesome. We had <laughs> 1,682 seniors attended and so we've outgrown that spot already. Um, the mayor came and she's committed to working with us to having the um, Thanksgiving dinner at the River Center and allowing us to bring our own food into the River Center. So we look forward to that. Is she going to give us any money? <laughs> Next year. <laughs> um, I mean, we always looking for donations. Mm -hmm. We are. We right. are. We, we can so, ask her. That's yeah, right. Yes, yes. yes, we can always if we're going to partner, I think that would be a great thing for her to put some money up as well. I think that's an awesome idea, uh, Representative Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Gilmore, I already spoke to you about our uh, employee retirement plan. Um, I, it looks like almost 100% of the employees will participate <coughs> in the retirement plan. The agency will be matching um, up to 3% of their salaries um, for the first year. Uh, we already have about eight hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars in reserve to go toward that program so we're very excited that we're able to have some savings and help our employees at the same time thank you mm -hmm. yes thank yes you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you dr cole we also have you know we did the first round of uh, of salary uh increases and so we have some very very happy employees right now um, and then our end of a year evaluations just um, occurred, and then so we are we'll be able next year to do some merit increases from from those evaluations. Uh, and we determined four percent. You all determined at the last board meeting four percent was a great number, so we'll be able to do that as well. Now, for you all, the state says because you know you, we have federal funds and we get, we have federal guidelines that you have to have a, a training from them once a year. We're going to have a board board retreat in January, on January 18th. 
It's <laughs> I didn't pick this date. All right? Okay, it's the governor's office. They want to have a retreat with you all where they come in and they do an a hour and a half training. They're going to show you some slideshow. If you've been on this board for, before, you've had it before. It's long, it's boring, but you got to take it. All right? Pastor Cyrus has had it quite a few times. January 18th. Mm hmm. January 18th. You got something committed already? To the judges. To the judges? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Um, it's at, we're going to do it downtown. Maybe you can just come in for that class part or something. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think I can fly back. Oh, you're out of town. <laughs> Absolutely, all the way out of town. All the way out of town. <laughs> well, I'm going to be out of town also. You too? This is Panama City. Um, yeah. um, okay, well, maybe we can do a makeup for, for your classes. We'll see. You don't know where you're going to be? Ms. Booker says she don't know where she's going to be. How, how long is it? Oh, it's a day, all day. <laughs> it's like from 8 to, it's going to be like from 8 to, 8 to 3 o'clock. Yeah. 8 to 3 o'clock. Oh, right. Because you have that, you'll have a board meeting. Uh, you'll end that meeting with a board meeting. You've been to the retreats before. I've been before. And you've been before. Um, and they have to and come they in. always happen right here in town. We, I would, right. I would suggest y'all move them. Well, it's because like because <laughs> because our board doesn't have a budget, oh, okay. right? Okay. And we don't want to have problems with the legislative auditor. We're going downtown to the Hilton. We're gonna give y'all a good lunch, <laughs> and you're gonna take this class and to satisfy them, and y'all gonna be satisfied. <laughs> we're not gonna have any problems, okay? Oh, now and then, right after that, we're having Pam is calling. Yes, ma'am. Well, will this include our ethics training? For the it can if you haven't had it. We uh, Dr. Before, but you, have to renew it every year. you have to renew it every year, so we can include Let's that. Let's knock it all out because one day. Knock it all we out. officially <laughs> have our own ethics trainer that has been to ethics and he can train the staff and board. Dr. Gilmore is officially a trainer for the Department of Ethics, <laughs> <laughs> and so he has trained all the staff all the way down to the kitchen and maintenance. Everybody has had ethic training with the staff, so we'll train you all as well. Okay, um, and then right after that, the staff will have their retreat and our classes will be the 19th and 20th, but we're in New Orleans because we have a budget. <laughs> wow. Wow. She said, wow. <laughs> you guys don't have a budget. That's ethics. <laughs> That's ethics. It's crazy. We can give y'all t-shirts now. <laughs> we can't give y'all a shirt this year. <laughs> okay, and then um, last Meals but... Meals on Wheels America. Last but not least, we um, have been contacted by the National Meals on Wheels... Um, Meals on... Meals on Wheels of America. And they have been watching our numbers. Um, I don't know if you, many of you are on social media, but this year our federal Meals on Wheels numbers were improved from February of this year to the last quarter, which was October of this year, by 89.9%. And they sent a letter to the governor's office, and the governor's office sent us a letter of congratulations because we've increased our meals by 89%. And so the national, thank you. So the National Meals on Wheels is having a health care, a national health care initiative with um, Humana and Medicare, and they want us to be uh, one of their pilot projects. They're going into 13 markets um, starting in 2020, and they want to reimburse us for all of our meals wow. beginning in 2020. And they want us to not only, not only do they want to pay for all our meals, but they also want us to include a breakfast and a dinner and em hire employees to go in and spend an hour with homebound seniors just getting to know them. They call that a happy hour. And so we will be a part of the pilot, so the National Meals on Wheels will be a So. The national folks are, are, are looking at our work, um, Dr. Gilmore, and well, and I've been appointed as the national co-chair for the ASA American Society on Aging. They are having their conference in April in New Orleans, and I am co-chairing the conference. And so I will be talking on several of the panels there as well on how do you increase services. Um, and then we've also been invited as chair of the conference for the National Council on Aging Conference, which is in New Orleans in June.
July, and so we'll be also spearheading that conference. So we're busy, busy, busy nationally. <laughs> we still fight. Please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, on that note, I just like to add uh, when we went to Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, the guy that was showing us around, he was just amazed. He said he had never seen anything like that. A bunch of seniors just coming through yeah. uh, the, the, uh, the facility. Uh, and if you wanted to know about it, because I, th I asked you how many we took seniors a, we had. Yeah. We took about 700 seniors yeah. that day to two different museums. We went, we had a day trip. And so we took about 444 seniors on 11 buses to Jackson, Mississippi, and we took another five buses uh, with about another two, 300 to New Orleans to the World War II Museum. And so we went to the museums first, and then we went to the senior playgrounds um, at the casino. <laughs> I was like, the senior playground? <laughs> casino. I'd like to add that we went, when we went to the, um, the, the first African-American school, mm -hmm. In the neighborhood, yeah, they were so excited. The people in the neighborhood came out. They were they came, came out to meet us. Coming out of their homes and <laughs> looking at all of the buses, you would have thought that we were a bunch of celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> Even the dogs. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so, we've been busy, um, and so that's my report, Madam Chair. Any other business? Yes, ma'am. We will. Yes, rolling. keep it going. <laughs> okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Look at Jamie. He's <laughs> good for that motion. <laughs> All is in favor? Ah. Okay. Thank y'all. I want to say it's been a pleasure to serve in all the board members. This I look year. forward to seeing you in 2019. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Thank you.